Hello, in this session we're going to talk about holds management within the Milwaukee County Federated Library System using the Sierra ILS. Holds are central to the automation process and can be very confusing even for longtime staff members. As system staff and li member library staff, we probably deal with more issues related to holds than any other library matter. So reviewing this on occasion is very useful. In this session we're going to focus on how to place a hold, the difference between title holds and item level holds. We'll go through the process of creating a hold itself, reprioritizing a hold, and canceling a hold. And we'll also talk about what happens after a hold gets placed on an available item and what happens after a hold gets placed on an unavailable item checked in later. So the first part of this process is going through how to place a hold. In our example here, we're going to look at for a James Patterson title called Black Book. So we're in search holds mode. We're doing a title search in Sierra. We're going to look for the sound recording version of uh, this James Patterson title, which is uh, relatively recent at the time of this video recording. So I have my system set up to go automatically to the summary view of this bibliographic record and we're looking at the holds area which is typically where you would go if you're placing a hold for a patron within Sierra. You'll notice that there are uh, a few buttons here at the top and these indicate uh, the type of hold that you can place. Uh, the first is a hold copy return soonest uh, and those indicate either uh, what are called bib or title level holds. That's where the hold is placed on the title or bib level uh, and any available item, any item that becomes available um, can be used to fill that hold. A select hold selected item is typically referred to as an item level hold and that's where the hold um, can only be filled by the specific item that it is on. So if we look at this first uh, item here on the list, this cutahay item. Um, when you place a whole selected item hold on that particular item, only that item can fill that hold. If I place a hold copy return soonest, any available item in this list can fill that hold. The title holds are typically uh, fill faster than, say, item level holds as you would expect because there are more available items uh, for those for those holds to do. Um, and uh, the item level holds also have issues uh, with display within the patron record um, so you have to be very careful about placing those. We typically recommend that staff place uh, item level or bib level holds using this hold copy return soonest button rather than uh, item level holds unless there's a specific reason to do so. So we'll go through the process of creating a bib level hold. We click on hold copy return soonest. I'm going to use a test patron that I've already had set up before but typically this is where you would put in the patron uh, name or barcode number. Click on search and then this uh, window will pop up and this is where you put in the specifics for the hold. If you're uh, accessing Sierra from a specific library location, say for example Brown Deer or Villard Square, West Dallas, typically your uh, pickup location is already going to appear here in the list and you would just leave that alone because your patrons probably going to want to pick it up at your library since they're sitting or talking to you within that library. The limit to location field is also uh, a possibility here. We typically recommend that you don't use this field uh, because it will limit your uh, holds to be using a specific item from a, a, a item location. So if we look at this list here, we could limit it to 23 ACW, 31 ACW. This typically is used for libraries that have more than one copy on an available bib and they only want the hold to fill one of the uh, to be filled by one of those available copies. We typically don't recommend you do that, uh, but it is available. Not wanted before dates are typically um, used for people who may not be able to pick up the hold uh, when it becomes available. So, for example, if they're on vacation for a few weeks and they want to come in on the 10th or later, 
you could put in that date and then the hold will not be filled until after the 10th of May in this case. You'll also notice that um, when you're looking at holds that have already been uh, created that this date may be grayed out and that indicates that the hold is frozen. And holds can be frozen only by the patron within the patron record on a county cap and nowhere else. Staff cannot affect those holds. The only thing you can do is cancel that hold and reset it if that becomes a necessity. But typically the patron has control over that whole process. But those would be grayed out and I will show an example of that on this bib. The not wanted after date is typically set for one year in the future. Uh, that means after that date, for example, April 27th, 2018, that hold will be expire off of um, Sierra, and that will not uh, fill any of the uh, be filled by any of these items. Typically, we don't have an issue with that, but there are some instances where there's one item on a a, a bib, and it's really really popular. Um, Rosetta Stone, for example, is one uh, example one of those where you have a really long hold list with people who have been on on there for many many months. Typically, that does not happen though. Uh, that's very unique cases. Uh, and you generally don't have to worry about it. The hold note is used particularly for those um, instances where you're reprioritizing a hold. Say, for example, a hold was canceled in error, and you want to restore the hold and then put that patron back in the queue exactly where they were before. You'll have to put a hold note in there uh, telling people that it was reprioritized for that reason. So typically, you wouldn't have to do too much here and just make sure that the pickup location is correct. And um, if they do want to not want it before date end, you can do that. But typically, that's not the case. So you could just click on OK. And now I have a bib level hold. If I go into this queue here, we have item level holds and we have bib level holds. The bib level holds will now appear in this list. And my test patron A record will show up at the very bottom. If I wanted to modify this hold, I would select the hold as I have below here. Click on Modify. I can correct the pickup location and add a limit to location or any other facets of this hole that I would want to do. Um, otherwise you could just leave it as is. If for example I wanted to reprioritize this hold what I would do is uh, select the hold as I have here before. Click on change priority and right now my number is 7. I can change this to say one or two. And you'll notice my hold is now reprioritized at the top of the list. And typically staff are going to notice that there's a, a disconnect between the date placed and uh, where that patron should be in the hold queue. So they always come up with questions. So you'll have to go into the hold itself after you do the reprioritization and, and put a hold note in. and then initialize and date it. And that typically will give a indication to staff that are looking at this record that the um, hold reprioritization has taken place. I want to take a look at some of these other holds here. That the, You'll notice that there's a not before date here. If I go in to modify these holds, this is a clear example of a frozen hold you'll notice that the not wanted before date is grayed out and that indicates the hold is frozen. Even if that date passes, 12 ton 2017, that hold will still be frozen. That date is kind of a misnomer. It's kind of confusing, but it really doesn't mean anything. All that matters is that it's grayed out, and that the patron can uh, is the only one that can unfreeze that hold. If I, say, wanted to cancel this hold, I could easily do that by clicking on Cancel Holds, and it'll at prompt you if you want to print a hold cancel notice. You'll generally say yes. And then it will prompt you for these different uh, options. So if it's missing or damaged, um, you know, there could be an order cancel. That's not typically the case, but usually missing or damaged. You'll click yes. And what will happen is that the hold will be canceled and the patron on a weekly basis will be sent uh, or just once. But on a weekly basis, hold cancellation notices are queued and sent out. Uh, via, via email or print. So what happens uh, after a hole gets placed on an available item is that the uh, item uh, 
becomes queued for a, a, a library that has an available item um, on the list. So for example, in our case, there's not many available items. But let's just say, for example, this uh, item at Cudahy uh, came in and, and became uh, check shelves. Or this item from Franklin was checked in and um, became available. Now it's right now it's in process. It would not queue a hold. So uh, if that item, uh, Franklin item, did become available, um, Franklin would be paged for that item. And generally they have a 48 hour window um, to retrieve that item from their shelves, put it in delivery and get it to the pickup location, perhaps Brown Deer or some other location within the system. After that 48 hour clock runs out and there's uh, other available items well, within um, the um, bib queue here, the item uh, records that you see here on the page, uh, it will go to the next library that has an available item. If there are uh, no available items, which be, would be kind of the second option here, let's say in this case there really aren't any available items, you'll get what are basically ca uh, called these hold queues. So in this case we have no available items on this James Patterson book and a queue starts accumulating for um, patrons who want the title but there's no available copy. So the way that these queues are filled generally is that um, they're dealt with in sequential order by date placed. If we had item level holds or bib level holds it wouldn't matter. Say for example uh, a Franklin item with both an item level hold and a bib level hold became available. Um, it would look at the date placed and choose whichever one came first in that queue. We also have something in place called local holds priority where the system first fill holds where the pickup location matches the ownership location. So for example if a Greendale book is checked in the software will look for any holds with Greendale as a pickup location first and fill them first. And the idea here is that it lessens delivery serves and serves the home library citizens first. And that was the original intent of that. So anyway, this is a short video on holds management. If you have other questions, you can always consult system staff or uh, other folks within the system for information. Thank you.